Hello, thanks for joining me for another video. Today I want to do something a little bit different because recently I um, noticed that Banatec had added a new toy to their club sport lineup and it is of course the magnetic paddle module. Um, now this thing is designed to go on numerous steering wheels and numerous hubs but one of them is um, of course the universal hub which is the one I'm running. And lo and behold it arrived in the post the other day. So what I'm going to do is unbox this then install them on my um, Club Sport uh, Universal Hub. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. Um, then I'm going to take it for a little drive in ACC or something like that uh, to offer some comments. So if you are thinking about buying these things, they cost about £100. Um, I, by the way, I'm not sponsored by Fanatec. I have bought these with my own money, so I'm going to be offering up a completely um, objective opinion, non-biased and all that. Um, if you are thinking about buying these, then hopefully I'll be able to help you make the decision. Now, the installation part of the video might be a bit ropey because I haven't really got time to set up a lot of different scenes, so all I'm going to do is put the camera up top and get on with it. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so let's get into this in the Club Sport Magnetic Paddle Module. Um, it's pretty recent, um, as I described in the uh, introduction so at the time of making this it's uh, it's recently been released and it is sort of designed to go on kind of uh, Fanatec sort of club sport range of things um, but that's not to say it won't fit on the podium stuff as well so I think it will go on the podium hub too but what is it for a start so it's paddle modules but they use neodymium, neodymium sorry uh, magnets as their sort of spring system or their, their mechanism of return. After you've pulled the paddle and, and released it, the, the magnet causes it to return rather than a spring. So that wasn't a very good explanation. So here's the wheel that I'm gonna fit them to. Um, the shifters here are spring loaded. So you can see I can pull them right back and release them and they just twang back again. But this is why I want to replace them because of this annoying sort of twang. Um, the other thing as well that I don't like about these is when you pull them that is the point in which the button engages so this is the the distance that you have to pull in order to change gear yeah but I can still keep going up until this point so there's a whole load of travel here that does absolutely nothing um, so what I'm finding I'm doing is, is when I'm driving I'm either just very lightly touching them or I'm holding them in a position before the uh, the switch engages and then just doing that or I'm you know just really just barring them and there's so much travel there when I release them they just twang back cause a lot of vibration through the steering um, there's nothing really wrong with these they're pretty good to be honest with you uh, but I just I would just like something a little more tactile so that is where the magnetic shifters come in so what I'm going to do is pull everything out of the box here um, we're going to have a look at what's in this box and then I'm going to fit them to this here steering wheel. Okay. So, let's have a look. Uh, first things first, we get a quick guide. Of course we do, because um, Fanatec are pretty good with their quick guides. They're very nicely illustrated usually. Um, I'm not really going to pay much attention to this, I don't think, because I'm a bloke and we don't. But um, I'll probably come back to it when everything goes wrong and I need to reference something. Useful information if and when I need it. Okay, underneath the packaging, Fanatec are very good with their packaging. Personally, I'm not a big, you know, believer in waste of packaging just to make stuff look nice as long as it protects the product in transit, which is what it's for. So first of all, these are the paddles, um, carbon fiber, the lots of things. I'm not sure if they're real carbon fiber or if it's, they certainly look the part, don't they? You can see that shimmering of the carbon weave. Also notice that on the back here we have flush screw holes and on the front we've got countersink screw holes. So this would be the way that the screws go in. Let's just pop all of these out. Um, we've got the long ones for GT and the littler ones for F1 style rims. I'll probably use the long ones because I do more GT stuff, I think. Um, also, I, I don't have an F1 rim, so kind of pointless. Um, then we've got some waxy, papery stuff with what looks like the actual shifters inside. And there they are. So 
that's one of them. Um, don't know which one. Suppose it would be the. There you go. So that's the. the quite hard to operate actually, but that's because I've got no leverage right now. But they're really solid. I mean, there's on, off, or rather off and on. So it's really a binary. It's very, very tactile. Not a lot of movement in them. That's great. Okay, let's grab the other one out of there. Pretty tricky to get out of the box, actually. They're really well made as well. This um, aluminium construction. Very nicely finished. Very sturdy feeling. Can't even get this one to move. Um, so, I don't know if you can see that little white thing in there, that's the actual switch. So as I'm actuating it, it's operating. And um, it looks like it's covered with a rubber boot as well. There's also a little rubber stop there, which softens the blow as you, as you actuate this thing. That's awesome. Don't need those bits. What's all this then? We've got some bolts. And some little screws. Um, so these are probably for mounting them onto the hub. Uh, I might just be able to use what's there, some edible stuff. No, not edible, don't eat that. <laughs> uh, what is this? This is uh, brackets. So these I think are for extending the reach of the shifter. So once it's mounted onto the module you can either have the shifter close um, or far out. It depends on the, the diameter of the wheel rim. So that's what that's for. Now mine is a fairly large wheel rim, it's about 300 I think, or thereabouts. So I probably will be needing to bring them out further just to make that work. Okay, cool. And we've got some tools. I love it when manufacturers give me tools. So we have a teeny weeny little Allen wrench, which has got a, a little dimpled end on it, which is probably going to be handy, and a larger one. So I imagine these are going to be useful for getting into the into the actual things themselves. I don't think there's anything else in here. There's not. Okay, let's uh, use that to get myself organized here. Um, first task is I'll take the rim off this wheel. Okay. And there we are, the wheel is off. Let's put that to one side. So, um, now the fiddly part. So the shifters here are hooked up with, um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but through these holes here, let's just grab a little pointy thing. And we're not really focused very well, I apologize. I'm unfixed, but we got these holes here and then down inside there, uh, are the bolts that attach the shift uh, to the actual hub. Um, now the other aspect is, is the, the wire here which goes into the hub via this grommet um, which means I've got to take this front plate off to access that and um, that is done by removing these four chapos here. So we do that next. That is all of those out. Um, just going to pop the top off of this, and this is going to be really awkward because all of these other modules are attached um, via, well, they're attached to this front plate, and the cables are going in and attached to the board, so it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a pain. You can also see how this thing's connected. There's just these two bolts going through the side of the hub here. Um, so that's what we're going to be aiming to remove. Um, but first of all, I'm going to take these plugs out and I'm going to try and keep this in a state where all of these grommets don't pull out because these things have got a tendency to pull out and then they're just a pain in the butt. So um, I could actually do with something to uh, rest the top of this hub on. So, right, let's get on with getting these um, 
connectors out. And it's fairly straightforward. Just yank them from the... You can't see what I'm doing. I'm sorry because my hands are the It's really difficult to actually show you this. But I guess you can kind of... There you go. I'll just unplug that one from there. I'll try and keep my hands out of the way. As we... It's impossible, I'm afraid. Because... Um, when you unplug these, you don't want to be yanking them by the cables. You want to try and get a grip around the top of the plug and pop it out. But of course, because there's a there's a jacket around the socket, there's only this little lip here where my fingernail is that's um, accessible. So it's a little bit tricky to get all of them. I'm actually surprised that Fanatec are quite happy to allow their consumers to muck around inside the guts of their hardware, really, because, you know, usually this sort of thing would void your warranty. Um, but Fanatec are like, nah, it'll be okay. It'll be fine. What would be really nice, or what would have been a better design, is if they didn't bother with all of this stuff. This, this thing was actually sealed, and all of the modulars connected via an interface which was mounted to the outside um, and not using bloody little Molex things like that, you're actually using some whatever proprietary kind of socket or plug or whatever they wanted to do, but it would certainly make this kind of nonsense a lot easier. Not to worry, we shall carry on. So, um, you know what, this box thing isn't really helping me, I'm just gonna, I think all of the guamets have fallen out at this point. You, are we all just forget about that, shall we? So I'm gonna pop that screwdriver bit in. Pop the screwdriver, the Allen bolt, and of course this is so tight I can't actually move it. Oh. Can I get the other end of it in? Actually just crank it down with a bit more leverage. There you go. There you go. So I, like, I thought I was going to have to get a mole grip on there then. So I'm, if, uh, I'm trying to keep this at an angle that you can see. It's really difficult to do whilst controlling all this nonsense as well. So there you go. There's the actual one of the actual shifters themselves. Let's try and pull. Let's drop the uh, and drop the bolts out of there. Again, they're covered in grease and stuff. Um, so yeah, this is quite a different affair. It's it's just steel, I think, just bent into shape into some uh, brackets. There's a spring in there, which is lubricated to the high heels. And yeah, that's that's it. We've got um, we've got the micro switch there, which uh, looks like a standard electronics micro switch. Rather, the ones on the magnetic shifters, I think, are proper automotive switches, which are sealed as well, so dust and gunk and crap isn't going to affect them, hopefully. So, yeah, these go. Let's get rid of the other one. And of course, the uh, Gonna release it from this grommet here, and the screws have fallen into the body, so we'll just empty those out. Put that all there. Let's take these away. So same deal with the other shifters, just the other way around. Um, and it's worth noticing. Oh, sorry, it's worth noting rather that the grommets are these tiny little rubbery doobies, and they've got split in them which allows you to get the cable in and out without actually having to take them out of the body um, although it's not it's not always the case you can see that the, the wires just pop out so it's going to be a bit of a fiddle getting them back in I probably won't film that because it would be ridiculous to do so yeah I'm not going to bother putting that one back in yet anyway so they're all popped out over the other side as well Ugh, it's going to be a it's going to be fun and games getting all these wires back in. It's going to be like herding a bunch of cats. Right, looking up on the side of the hub, you can see that there's two sets of holes. Um, 
these this set down here would mount the the shifters further from um, the wheel rim uh, that's where it it was originally when it came and, and I moved it up to this position. So I think I'll fit the new ones at that position as well. I think the wider portion of the shifter actually sits toward the bottom. So this would be the one that goes um, on the, or it would be well, it would, yeah, it would be the left side. So the front of the steering wheel is attached to that. Um, and we pull the shifter back. So this one is going to mount there. Uh, now I've got all of the bits that came with over here. Um, so these are pretty much the, I think they're the same deal as the, the screws that came out, although they're a lot longer. Um, so if we just have a look at the actual so the reason is, is because the bracket here is a lot thicker, right? So the original is just a hunk of steel, so it's quite thin. Um, whereby the, the new ones are made out of, uh, they're milled out of a, a big chunk of aluminium, so they're quite thick. So these longer screws, or bolts rather, will be needed. So let's get those in. Now, we haven't got any the chassis to sort of avoid this time and I do apologize if my hands get in the way it's very difficult to sort of do this whilst maintaining line of sight for the camera if I shift that over there I'm just going to get one of them going Nip them up, not too tight, but tight enough, you know. So there you go. And the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, that should be good. And now, <laughs> and now the real fun begins because I've got to tame this big. Sorry, bunch the camera. I've got to tame this big mess of crap and get it back into this box. Um, so first of all, first of all, I'm going to bring back my box. Let's just move those out of the way. And we're going to pop that there. So I'm going to take the um, wiring for the new shifter to the middle grommets. And then the, the bottom modules here will go through the bottom and the top modules there will go through the top. And there you go, that is connected. Rather than bore you to tears with watching me do all of this, basically what I'm gonna do is get all these wires mounted back into these various things and get this front plate on. All right, so I've got, um, the back of this put back together so i've got the, the back on and i've got all of the uh the the wires going through the appropriate holes um and that was an absolute nightmare this thing is fiddly as hell uh really is these these grommets are um such a bad idea quite frankly i think fanatec could have done better with this they could have really given us some you know plugs on the outside here but hey ho that's what it is so um, our paddles are actually mounted now and it seems like I've put them on the correct way as well so that's a bonus. I was half expecting them to get this far and then realize that they're, I've got to take it all apart and start again. So now um, now we've got to get our shifter-y paddle-y bits on. So we'll pull on these magnets because as I'm putting the screw in I can feel it tugging it over toward the uh, the magnet there. So I'm using these short ones. There is longer ones, longer screws as well. So um, let's see these. 
We've got a bunch of longer screws and these are probably for use with the spacers and it's slightly out of focus. But yeah, we've got quite a lot of hardware that they've given us to um, accommodate all the various options. So I'm going to stick these arms on first. And I'm going to put the, the paddles at their, their maximum extension and just going to see what what that's like with the wheel. I'm just going to nip them up. Oh shit, I think I think I may have pulled thread on that one. You can't go too tight with these. I think this one might be a little bit... Yeah, I believe that one's pulled. That's a shame. Okay. Okay, no, not to worry. Right, we'll flip him over and... Let's get the, uh, the shifters on. Now, if I was to use the spacers, I can either use them on the back. I'm just going to tell you what, let's demonstrate on this side because it's got more focus. Um, I can either use them on the back or on the front. Um, I'm tempted to put them on the back and just leave them without the shifters. It's a bit janky, that, isn't it? All this stuff. Well then, now I might actually, depends on what the wheel rim gives me. Let's pop the wheel rim on the top and see, see what we can see. See, if it was mounted back there, I, I kind of get it, you know. I'm thinking around about there. You certainly don't. You don't want them. You don't want them sticking out out here somewhere because you know you've got to get around the blooming things. Otherwise, I usually keep one finger on on them as well. There's a little bit of rattling there, actually, isn't there? It's quite rattly. I expect them to just be a solid thunk, not a... I wonder what that is. Right, okay. Um, I've decided to mount them on the second set of holes uh, from there, so that's more comfortable for me. Also found out what the vibration was. It turned out to be the quick release ring. So when this is mounted onto the um, actual wheelbase, it should be nice and quiet, but these already feel really really good um i'm gonna have to drive them i might i might adjust the position i might move them out a little further but i don't know these already feel really really nice um there's so much more tactility in the way that they're engaged so you know i i've i've got to put a decent amount of pressure and then it's just click and that's it you you change gear you know you change gear there's no question about it, which was the problem I was having with the other ones. It was, you know, it was, it was kind of vague, uh, but these are much better. So next job is, um, I've also, you know, obviously screwed it all together. It's all done. Next job is, is to get it back on the rig and see how it drives. Right. So I'm going to take this McLaren for a couple of laps around Spa. Um, I've got the camera set up a little closer to the wheel this time. So hopefully you can see the shift is in action in a little more detail um, I'm just gonna go and get started up here yeah so they're, they're so much more tactile already I can just feel that the the shift is far more positive than it was I can actually hold them I can actually hold them halfway but it's 
it, it's just so much more effort and there's so much less travel on them so if I do it on this side I can actually hold it there where it's not being actuated but it's it's just really difficult to do and you you just wouldn't do it whether with the other ones it was you know you could very easily uh, you could very easily hold them in sort of halfway position and I found that it would not necessarily cause me to miss shift, but I would naturally miss shift sometimes because I'd expect the gear to change, or I would change change gear earlier than I thought. But with these now, there's a definite um, there's a definite clunk to when you when you change gear, and as well as that, now that they're actually mounted on the rig on the wheelbase. Um, they feel and sound a lot more solid than they did when they were just over there on the desk. I don't know why, but my pit limiter disengaged. I don't suppose it matters right now because we're only in a practice session. They feel nice as well. They don't feel plastic, um, but they don't feel metal either. Obviously, you know, they're carbon, so they wouldn't do, but I'm talking, you know, complete tac tactility here. They're actually quite warm to the touch compared to the metal shifters that the original modules had on them. So it's such a short throw. It feels so much more direct. And even the, the 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 way that they return to their um, normal position, I, I don't know. It, it it's different. It's kind of uh, it's much more snappy. Now, I've got paddle shifters on my real life car um, because it's got an auto gearbox, uh, and they they're not magnetic they're clearly spring-loaded but they've also got a very very short travel um, and changing gear in that car is very satisfying and I'm getting the same experience here although these feel even more tight so these feel like even more quality than than what BMW put on their cars you know find as well as pulling the shifter with one finger is just as easy it's one thing I was a little bit um, not concerned about but one thing that entered my mind was you know there's so much more power with these the the, the magnets are exerting more power to pull the, the shifter back into position after you release it uh, would it be would I be able to shift as quick and would I be able to um, go down the gears for example so I'm coming up to the bus stop now let's see how fast I can go down the gears on a particularly late break yeah I mean it's just no problem at all and there's absolutely no question in your mind that you've shifted gear there's no doubt there that you're actually in a different gear there because the not only you can kind of feel it through the steering you feel one sort of sharp jolt as the uh, shifter engages but as well as that the, the feeling that you get through your fingers as the shifter engages with the, the its bump stop um, there's just no no question at all that you change gear whether with the other ones you can you pull them the, the, the little micro switch clicks and then you can keep on pulling them you know, and it'll, it'll be back here before it actually stops. And that was a bit of a problem I found with changing gear fast. So, in this scenario now, I would often lose... That was a totally shit corner. <laughs> I would often lose my sort of place where I was. Or I'd be trying to only actuate the shifter halfway. I'd be just trying to just sort of, like, tickle it in order to limit the amount of travel so that I could change gear a bit quicker 
Um, and of course then that's when you get into mischief territory because you've got no tactile feeling as to when the shifter has actually engaged in your gear. Um, instead you're just sort of using muscle memory or guessing. I'm doing particularly badly around this uh, circuit here but that's because I'm not really trying what I can do fair, particularly well when I do try. I think my quickest time around here is uh, 2.27 which is flipping atrocious really. But yeah, these shifters definitely feel a lot better. So I would say that they're worth the hundred pounds, or whatever that equates to in whatever currency you use wherever you are from. But here in the good old UK, they are a hundred quid or thereabouts. And I would say that yes, yeah, certainly they're worth the money. Because they have once once again just improved the immersion that little bit more and um, I'm just gonna go back to the pits now because <laughs> because I'm doing badly here but that's really all I needed to do just a couple of laps just to give them a drive they feel really good the, there is one thing I will say about them is I can feel a little bit of flex so if I operate the top of the paddle that's the, gonna be the wrong side but if I operate the top of the paddle feel a little bit of flex there just before I start pulling on it and same on the bottom so if you operate it from the middle it's not a problem but on the top there's a, a wee bit of play and on the bottom there's a wee bit of play and I suspect it's just because there's two parts to this mechanism and the middle part is obviously hinged so maybe that's just got a little bit of movement in it but to be honest with you that's not a deal breaker um, it, it, it's really you know it, it doesn't detract from the experience at all um, yeah he's stalling again <laughs> I'm gonna leave the video there um, I think that they're definitely worth it um, if you are thinking about buying them then yeah crack on they're good hopefully that was informative and um, helpful in some way and uh, if you like this kind of content then Check out my channel again and I'll bring you some more very soon. Thanks for joining me. See ya.